Hi everyone. In the immunology topic, we are going to discuss about types of antigen antibody reactions in which the labeled antibody techniques or assays is one of the types. So, in order to enhance the sensitivity of serological test, either the antigen or antibody is labeled with a signal generating molecule and those signal generating molecule may be a fluorochrome or an enzyme or it may be a radioisotope anything we can use for the signal as a signal generating molecules so based on the nature of the label that we are using whether we are using the fluorochrome or an enzyme or a radioisotope these labeled antibody assays are going to be of three types how many types three types the first type is going to be called as immunofluorescence the second one is called as radio immunoassay that is simply called as ria and the third one is called as enzyme linked immunosorbent assay that is simply called as elisa okay so we will discuss about this elisa in another part so in this part we are going to majorly discuss about immunofluorescence and radio immunoassay so let's begin Immunofluorescence. The fluorescence is a phenomenon in which certain dyes like fluorochromes or exposed UV light or violet or blue light to make them fluorescence or emit visible light. Such type of the phenomenon is called as fluorescence. The dyes such as rhodamine B or fluorescence isothiocyanate can be coupled to either the antibody molecules without changing the antibody's capacity to bind to specific antigen is the main criteria that we have to follow here. The fluorescent, that is the fluorochromes also can be attached to antigen. That means depending upon the thing that we want to identify, either we can add this fluorochromes to the antigenic solution or the antibody. So there are going to be of two main kinds of fluorescent antibody assays that is immunofluorescence is going to be done in two ways. One is going to be of direct immunofluorescence and second one is going to be obviously indirect immunofluorescence. So let's see the first one direct immunofluorescence. So here this method involves fixing the specimen so that may be of a antigen cell or microorganism containing the antigen onto a slide. So we are going to take a slide and then we are going to coat this uh, uh, microorganism and it is going to be fixed to the slide. Then specific fluorescent dye is going to be labeled with the antibody and added to the slide and incubator. That means we are going to fix the antigen on a slide and we are getting ready with the antibody mixed with the fluorescent dye and then that fluorescent antibody was added to the slide and then incubated. Now this slide is washed to remove any unbound antibodies and examine with the fluorescent microscope for a yellow green fluorescence. So if we are going to get the yellow green fluorescence. Now this pattern of uh, yellow green fluorescence reveals the antigen location in the thing. This technique is mainly used, that is direct immunofluorescence is mainly used, uh, reveals the, that means to identify the antigens found on surface of group A streptococci and to diagnose some sort of enteropathogenic bacteria like E. coli, Neisseria, that is Neisseria meningitis, Salmonella typhi, Shigella and then some sort of uh, so Listeria monocytogenous, Haemophilus influenza and the rabies virus. So directly as you are coating the antibody with the fluoros fluorescent dyes and then you are mixing with the antigen solution and you are absorbing. So this can be simply called as direct immunofluorescence. Then coming to the indirect immunofluorescence. So what is this indirect immunofluorescence? In this technique, a known antigen is fixed onto a slide as usual like that only the test anti serum is then added that means here we are going to add the test serum containing antibodies and if the specific antibody is present it reacts with the antigen to form the antigen antibody complex 
when fluorescent label antibody that means separately we are going to take the fluorescent antibodies labeled antibodies when they are it it is going to bind to the specific antibody that has already reacted with the antigen that means in this one the fluorescent antibodies are going to bind to the antigen antibody complex otherwise it is not going to bind so here what is happening when fluorescent label antibodies is added it binds to the specific antibody that has already reacted with the antigen in the serum after incubation and washing the slide is examined with the fluorescent microscope so obviously the occurrence of the fluorescence shows that the antibody is going to be specific to the test antigen in the serum and this test is uh, mainly used to identify the presence of tryponema pallidum antibodies in the diagnosis of syphilis as well as the antibodies produced in response to other microorganisms so this is how the immunofluorescence is going to be of having the two types one is the direct where the fluorescent antibody was added to the antigen if they are specific to one another you are going to get the uh, fluorescent when you observe in the under the microscope you can see the fluorescent if in the indirect method first of all we are letting the antigen and the specific antibody to react if there is no antigen in the patient serum there will be no binding with it so obviously these uh, what labeled antibodies also won't bind to it so obviously there will be no fluorescence which is a negative reaction okay so but what is happening in the positive case the antigen when is going to bind to the antibody specific antibody and then we are adding the label antibodies which are binding to this antigen antibody complex and we are finding the fluorescence so this is all about the immunofluorescence then moving to the second type of uh, label antibody assay that is radio immuno assay or simply called as ria so immunological assays using radioactively labeled reagents are called radioimmunoassays. So here in the previous one we are using the fluorochromes that is a fluorescent dyes and in the radioimmunoassays we are going to use the radioactively labeled reagents. So and this is one of the most sensitive techniques for detecting antigens or antibodies and this was a uh, first developed by two endocrinologists one is S.A. Berson and Rasnan Allo in 1960 to determine the levels of insulin and anti-insulin complexes in diabetics. Later this technique was applied for measuring hormones, serum proteins, drugs, vitamins at very low concentration. Thus it has become an extremely important tool in biomedical research and clinical practices. Now coming to the RIA. Uh, RIA is based on competition between the radioactively labeled antigens and the unlabeled antigens to bind to a specific antibodies. And this competition is determined by the level of unlabeled that is test antigen present in the reacting system and measured quantities of radio labeled antigen of the same kind being tested. Okay, and antibody specific to the antigen being tested are mixed and incubated one mixture with one with and one without added test sample so let's see then you will get the clarity of it so here is a picture of uh, radioactive antigens so what is happening here the RIA is going to be of uh, radioactive antigens or label and now the first antibody is going to have the attachment of all these antigens to it now incubator and then we are going to add the unlabeled antigen to it that is going to be the tested that we want to test. Now there will be competition between the radioactive antigens as well as the test antigens. If these test antigens are more in number so obviously these radioactive uh, antigens are going to be displaced and they are going to be occupied by unlabeled antigens. So now if we are going to see the precipitate of antigen antibody complexes with anti-immunoglobulin that is second antibody radioactive or supernet free antigen will be removed off by washing and we are going to have only this one where radioactivity of precipitate bound antigen is going to be not seen.
So at increasing concentration of test antigen, more label antigen is displaced. So that's what I told you or prevented from binding to antibody molecules. Then antigen antibody complex is washed to remove the unbound antigen from the mixture. Now what is happening? The radioactivity associated with the antibody is then measured or detected by means of radio isotope analyzers and autoradiography. A little amount of bind radioactivity, so here we had a very little amount, indicates that there is a large amount of antigen and a large amount when it is going to be the vice versa. That means large amount of bound radioactivity indicates that is there is a little antigen in the sample. So that's how this RA is going to be identified to find out the antigens rather than the antibodies. So once again, here we are going to uh, coat the antibodies with the radioactive antigens. So this is going to be called as first antibody. Now you are going to take the uh, unlabeled antigen which is present in the test sample. Now you are mixing it. So if these antigens are more in number, obviously the radio label is going to be displaced by this unlabeled antigens. And then you are uh, washing it, so where the free unbound antigens are going to be washed off. And finally, you are going to add the second antibody where the immune complexes are going to bind to this second antibody. Now, when uh, you are going to observe it in the autoradiography or the things, if you are going to have the uh, more radioactivity indicates that less test antigen are present. If you are having the less radioactivity which indicates more antigens are present in the sample. So this is how we are going to use this radio immunoassay in detection of uh, different types of antigens or antibodies. So this is all about the label antibodies immunofluorescence and the radio immunoassays and in the next part we are going to discuss about enzyme linked immunosorbent assay or simply called as ELISA. Thank you.